All right then gang, so as you can see, I've stripped back the home component from the last video. So we're now left with just this H1 inside this div. And now I'd like to dive right into our first Beautify component, and that is gonna be the button. So let's create one of these. And to do that, we say V hyphen BTN. So this is the button component. Remember, all Beautify components start with V hyphen. This one is called BTN. So inside here, what we can do is just type some text like click me. And if we save this and preview in a browser, you're gonna notice this button right off. So that's pretty neat, right? We didn't have to do much work at all to get this button. Now we can customize this. First of all, let's do that with some of those classes that we've seen to control the color. So I'll say class is gonna be equal to pink and this would give it a pink background and also white text. So white double hyphen text. Save that and view this in a browser again. Now we can see it's pink background and white text. Awesome. So that looks pretty nice and it didn't take long to do at all. All right, then let's do another example. V hyphen BTN again. This time we'll say click me again. But instead of using these classes, what I'd like to do now is use a prop called color. So we can also color certain elements, certain components using this color prop instead of using these different classes. Now it's gonna do a similar thing. If I say in here pink and save this, then we're gonna notice this is pink as well. Now, okay, we have black text, but that doesn't really matter. We can control that with either the dark prop like that, or by using a class which colors the text white. That's not important. I just wanted to show you that this prop right here, this can be used to control the color of the button as well, instead of using this as a class. Now also, I want to make this a depressed button. By that, I don't mean you know suicidal or anything like that. I just mean depressed as in pushed back against the page. So it removes this shadow right here. So let us now give this a depressed prop and that makes it flush against the page and we remove that box shadow. So that looks nice, right? All right, then let's do another example. We'll say V hyphen BTN. And inside, again, we'll just say click me. And then this time, I'm gonna give this a color prop again. And this color is, again, gonna be pink. And I'm gonna give this now a prop of flat. Now, what does flat do? Well, at first impression, you think it'd do something similar to this. It takes away the drop shadow. And it does do that, but what it also does is make the background transparent. But hang on, we said that we wanted the color to be pink. So how is this gonna work? Well, if we save this, let's just preview it and see what happens. And now we can see the background is transparent. There's no drop shadow at all, so it's taken that off as well. But this time, the color of the text is pink. And when we hover over it, we get a light pink in the background. So then, when we apply this flat prop to a button, this color prop, instead of controlling the background, because the background is now transparent because of the flat prop, this color prop now controls the text color and the hover color when we hover over the button. All right, so remember again, depressed just makes it flat and the color prop controls the background. Flat just takes away the drop shadow and the background color makes it transparent and the color prop controls the foreground color and the hover color, all right? So there's three simple examples, all very easy to do. Now, a lot of the times when you see buttons, we see icons in the buttons, right? So let's give that a whirl as well. So we'll say V hyphen BTN, and this time I'm gonna make this depressed again so that we remove the drop shadow, but we maintain the background color. I'm gonna give this a class this time instead of using the color prop. This class is gonna be pink, and it's gonna be white text, so white double hyphen text. Then inside here, what we want to do is place an icon. So this is gonna be the second component we see. It's V hyphen icon. Now this is gonna use material design icons by default. And there's loads of different icons that we can use. And all we have to do is place in the icon keyword right here. So for example, if I say email like this and save it, then we view this in a browser, we can see the email icon. Okay, now how do we know what these keywords are? 
Well, like I said, this is driven by material design icons. So the best way to find out is to go to the material.io website. I'll leave this link down below and scroll down and you can see all of these different icons we can use right here. And the keywords are just underneath. So we can see this is settings underscore brightness. This one is shopping underscore basket. We've used one called email right here. All right. So we have the icon that's very easy to use. All we say is V icon, then the keyword inside. Now what I'd like to do is also add some text to this button. So let's do a span tag and inside we'll say email me. Save that and preview in a browser. And it looks something like this. Now this looks okay, but the spacing between the icon and the text isn't really enough, I don't think. So in order to combat that, all we need to do is position this icon to either the left or the right of the button using the left prop or the right prop. So I've said left, save that and preview this in the browser. And that looks now a lot better. So that was really simple, right? We've created this nice little button with an icon in what? Three lines of code and no CSS whatsoever. So Beautify is taking care of all of that for us. Now, what I'm going to do is just copy this and paste it down below because we're going to do just a couple of different variations. So the next one I'd like to do is a small button. So by default, these are all kind of standard size buttons. If I make this button small by using the small prop, that's going to decrease this in size. Now, let's save that and view this in a browser. We can see this is now a small button. I think the icon is a little big. So also we can say small as a prop in the icon as well. And that makes the icon smaller. So now this looks a bit better. So that's a small button for us. OK, cool. What I'm going to do is paste this button again and this time we'll make it large. So we'll say large as a prop instead. Save that view in a browser and we can see this is now a large button. Now I'm also going to make the icon large right here. And what I'm also going to do is position this to the right. Now, if I save this now and preview in a browser, it's not gone way over to the right. It's made it large, which looks better. It's not gone way over to the right, but that's just because it's first in the template. So all we need to do is switch this. So it's below the span tag, save it again, view this in the browser. And there we go. Now it's over on the right and it's a large icon inside a large button. Cool. All right, let's do one more example. So I'm going to paste this down below again, and that's the wrong thing. So let me just grab this and paste it down here. OK, so this time I'm going to take off the large. I'm going to make this small like so. I'm going to make it dark as well. So we get the nice foreground color and I'm going to change the background color to purple. Now, I'm not going to use a class this time. I'll use the color prop just to show you we have different ways of doing this. So remember, the color drives the background of the button unless it's flat, in which case it controls the foreground of the button. OK, so right now, because this is not a flat button, it's a depressed button. It's controlling the background of the button. So it's going to be purple. It's also going to be small and the text will be white because we've used a dark prop as well. And that makes the text white. OK, so inside here, I'm just going to do an icon. I'm going to take away this span right here. And this icon, I'm going to take away right as well. And it's going to be called favorite. It should be a little heart. So if we save this now, view this in a browser, we can see this thing right here inside the button. Now, what I'd like to do is make this button smaller, maybe a circle around this heart. So how do we do that? Well, that kind of button is called a fab. So all we need to do is place in the fab prop right in that button, save it, preview this in the browser. And now we can see that little circle with the heart. So this is good if you want a little favorite button on something so a user can click on that to favorite that item. All right. So there we go, my friends. That's buttons for you. Again, there's loads of different props for buttons, loads we can do with buttons. And all you need to do is check out the button over here. So if you go to buttons like so, you're going to see all of these different things we can do with them, all of these different props. We've not seen a lot of them, but I would advise you just to check those out. It's also going to give you code template to achieve these different designs right here. Like so. All right. 
So there we go, my friends. That is buttons for you. In the next video, what we'll be doing is taking a look at breakpoints and visibility.